So we previously talked about uh, when you roll a fair die and you have a discrete set of outcomes, one through six, that the probability of each of those outcomes is one sixth, right? So we're also interested in talking about continuous sample spaces and there things are a little bit different. So for example, suppose we say, pick a number X in zero one. This is some real number. So it could be one third or it could be pi over four or something like that. So we have an infinite number of possibilities. Now I ask, what's the probability that X equals one half? So if you think about it, that number has to be zero. And that seems a little bit counterintuitive. Why is that? Well, I mean, if I think about my number line between zero and one, there are an infinite number of real numbers in this range, right? And if any of them had an actual non-zero probability, like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, it would immediately become true that if I add up all those probabilities, I'd get a number that was greater than one, which would violate my axioms of probability, right? So no matter how small, if I were to assign some non-zero probability to each possible number, I would immediately get a lot more than one total probability. So instead of assigning probabilities to exact outcomes, we have to assign probabilities to ranges of outcomes. So it makes more sense in the continuous world to say, um, you know, what's the probability that uh, X is in some range between A and B? And that's something that we can get a non-zero probability for. So for example, let's suppose again that we have um, X is in zero one and we assign a rule that says the probability that X is in the range A to B is equal to B minus A, where A and B are um, in zero one, right? And A is less than B. So this is a rule that tells us how to assign probabilities to ranges. That says, okay, suppose, for example, I had the range zero to one, and I want to know what's the probability that X is on the, you know, left-hand side of this range. Then it's just the width of that interval, which is a half. And then if I want to know what's the probability that X is on the other side of the range, it's also a half. And if I want to know, well, what's the probability that I'm in a certain kind of union of ranges? So say, you know, what's the probability that X is in here or in here? Well, again, that's still a half because the union of these disjoint intervals spans a width of one half on this line, right? So again, this is called the uniform distribution. And we're going to come back to this um, in much more detail, but I just kind of wanted to give you this to preview the sense that continuous world is different than discrete world, right? Another thing I want to kind of preview is that uh, we can kind of look at continuous distributions two uh, numbers at a time instead of just looking at one number. So for example, I could say um, pick X and Y randomly in the range zero to one. So when I say randomly, the implicit meaning is uniformly, that this is the uniform distribution. Usually that's kind of the colloquial meaning of random, right? That everything is equally likely to happen. So now I could say, okay, what's the probability that um, X is less than a half and Y is less than a half? Well, I could do that by looking at my graph of the box between zero and one, right? If this is X and this is Y, I'm asking about the event that X is less than a half and Y is less than a half. So that's really this subsquare of the whole thing. And I can see that this red area makes up one quarter of the total area. So I can kind of eyeball it and immediately say, the, this event is a quarter of all the um, total probability in this square. Or I could say, what's the probability that X is greater than or equal to Y? Again, if I draw my square, here's the line X equals Y. So X being greater than Y means that, you know, if this is my Y equals a quarter, that means that X has to be at least as big. So that's this 
interval here, and I can see that that red event makes up half of the total square. Or I could be a little sneakier and I could ask, okay, what's the probability that um, the difference between x and y, the absolute difference, is less than one-tenth? Well, let's draw that. So this is like saying, okay, if x is equal to zero, the only way that could happen would be if y was equal to one-tenth. If y was equal to zero, then x would be one-tenth. That would be the, the kind of upper limit. So I can kind of think about there's a band. So for example, when x is one-half, y has to be between 0.4 and 0.6. And so there's kind of this sweet interval here that specifies where the condition is true. And now I have to ask myself, what is the area of this interval? In this case, it's actually probably easier to think about uh, you know, what is the area of the leftover white parts, right? So here, what I have is a triangle that is 9 tenths on this side and 9 tenths on this side. And if I were to sandwich these two triangles together, I would have something that was 9 tenths square, right? So this is going to be 1 minus 9 tenths squared, which is 19 over 100, right? So if this seems a little bit weird, don't worry, we're going to come back to this in a lot of detail when we talk about things called PDFs, probability density functions, and then we'll be able to make very uh, direct measurements of any probability that we want. Okay.